Welcome fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 here to a little bit of a preview of Tanganyika. Tanganyika was originally part of Third Reich events way back before Third Reich events was released. I was in Four Hearts of Iron 3 just in case you didn't know. Um, I was of course talking about on the forum a lot to this mod that I was working on that I thought was really good and I just wanted to sort of and it wasn't it was still far from ready for me to release I wanted to show that yes it was real and yes this is the type of thing I was making so I took all of the events that I had created at the time covering sort of Germany's relationship with Africa and separated them off into this mod um, the title Tanganyika with the exclamation mark comes from an old um, uh, book under that title covering Germany in World War One, uh, which I've had for a long time. So that's sort of the story of it. So what you're seeing with Tanganyika is an element of what you will see with Third Reich events. It's it'll obviously be different in that they're different events. They're not repeated, but otherwise it's basically the same type of thing. Okay. Um, first, obviously, welcome to the mod here. Um, this is, I just had going to do a few short clips and put them together instead of have you play through the whole, watch me play through the whole thing just for the events. Uh, this is a period map talking about the resources of Tanganyika. I'm not exactly sure of the year of production, but it was before World War One. I, I think sometime in the 30s. Um, maybe before the rise of the Third Reich. But not absolutely sure. And it's fairly big and it gives a lot of stuff. Now, I will admit it is propaganda. Propaganda doesn't mean untrue. It just means it can be untrue. But it's also... Um, dealing with um, a viewpoint and so instead of maybe necessarily historically accurate in all details it may be pre presenting one side now of course it may also be wildly inaccurate too I don't know its accuracy but I've used this map originally for the first version and now for this version to um, modify um, Tanganyika the older version, when with Hearts of Iron 3, you had province pictures. I put province pictures for the full area of Tanganyika, plus a few other um, notable areas. And I um, dealt with, since you have province level um, infrastructure, added the railroads and such built up. So that isn't included in this, but um, the legend is above the map here, but I want to show the map well. Um, it's obviously in German. Which is appropriate for this, of course. Um, some of the resources that they were talking about. One is um, tin. I, and you can see there's a few areas on it. Not a lot. They had um, some tin resources. Now, I've equated tin. Instead of, of in the old game, they were just um, rare materials. Now it's sort of broken down. And of course, you can do it. In some ways, tin is used similar to um, chrome, chromium, and that it can be used in um, hardening um, some metals and being able to deal with some of the heat, as well as bronze and other things. So I sort of equated that with the resource of chromium, since we don't have specifically tin in it, and rubber. And you can sort of see, maybe not too well, but a few of these. This is wild rubber um, trees and plantation rubber trees is what they represent I believe yeah some hunters pictures you can right there you can pick out one and I sort of zoomed in on you know the larger version of the map and since both resources and resources are now at the state level I've decided and that the, the state infrastructure was okay so left it as that and have up one for rubber and one for um, chrome 
Now, of course, the British will be um, advanced and helped by this, um, especially if they lose their um, Far East rubber resources to the Japanese. But if Germany takes it, is able to move down and take it, it would give them valuable resources as well. So this is just the opening setup um, event for Tanganyika. Sort of waited until there were two images on the screen. This is here also is our Lebensraum. That's what this says. Um, period um, poster. Uh, you can tell it's from the fairly early era of the Third Reich because they used both national flags. Sorry for the construction noise in the background. Um, I'm going to continue this, but I probably shouldn't. Um, for a while in the Third Reich, both flags were used equally and simultaneously, and then eventually, I forget exactly the year. Sorry, I think it's 35, but not sure that they phased out the old tricolor for purely the swastika. Um, but, and this is a period sort of postcard image of, of Cameroon. For a political, this is a poster for a political, one of the, it was sort of a standard one used for multiple one, political rallies. Promoting up um, the Reich Colonial Bund, headed by Ritter von Epp. Promoting um, the reacquisition of, of Germany's colonies, and it, it shows Cameroon which has larger borders than it does today, Tanganyika, uh, Southwest Africa, and Togoland. They also had some Far East um, areas, but that's, that's what, this is just an event um, showing you, and there will be some of these that are just purely informational, showing you the type of movement that was going on in Germany at this time, agitating for the return of the colonies. Thanks. So we'll continue this in just a moment with more um, events. Okay, now fast forward a bit as you can see to September 36, another event. Okay, the Deutsche um, Colonial Kriegsbund, the DKKB, um, German Colonial Warriors League is basically how that would translate into English now. Once the Nazis came to power, all the various um, World War I veterans associations were all rolled into um, the um, Reich Krieger, um, Krieger Bund. Um, I'm not even going to try. Go uh, ahead. Well, yeah, whatever. The, well, and it starts with NES. National Socialist Reich Warriors Association. Kreihauser? Kreifhauser? Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, German viewers. Um, all of them were rolled into that one organization because there were, I don't know, I, I can almost say countless because I presume that there were many small and local uh, regional um, groups as well as um, veterans organizations based on different political um, parties, whether you're socialist or communist or you know, monarchists, one of the old Kaiser back or whatever, it was all rolled into that one organization, except for the um, veterans and a pre-existing organization, veterans of the um, African wars. And that's, um, I guess, also technically the, the guys from um, New Guinea. Um, and they did fight there for a while as well. Um, were in this other sub-organization that sort of, well, basically got to manage themselves. Notice there's no NS or National Socialist or other um, element in their exact title, which that is a key interesting thing. But they had obviously this, I don't know his exact status, whether it was just as a hero status or whether he had official position. Um, General Leto Vorbeck, or uh, von Leto Vorbeck, however you want to um, do that, pictured here on horseback. He was the general who led the um, the war in Tanganyika down here um, throughout, from the beginning through to the end, and never surrendered, just um, turned his army in after the German surrender. 
um, but he had fought, um, if you will, victoriously in a guerrilla sense, not that he held any particular territory, but he fought victoriously throughout the war, so he was a massive war hero um, in Germany at this time. Um, so that's one of the parades uh, with him riding his horse in it, and one of the sort of standard sort of postcard images for this, this group. Uh, so they sort of hold a key element to this mod. Now you have your choice whether to support um, the DKK or cost too much. Right now it's at, um, and I'm very willing to have um, players um, give input on this right now because I've changed it from a monetary and supplies cost to a political power cost. So it's going to cost 20 political power points um, to support this group. Uh, I'm looking at this as maybe going a little above and beyond what they did historically in the governmental sense. Um, if you want to get some of the benefits that uh, Tanganyika will give you, um, you will want to support this if you're going down the road. It costs too much. Not that you won't see anything in this mod continuing, but you'll see rather little. So you want to support this veterans organization. It will have a um, key element. Obviously, that it continued um, through to the end of the National Socialist Era, but we're giving you a chance of supporting it even more. And it's sort of a middle of the road doesn't really help with the mod, so I don't have a third choice. We just have support or not. So that's it. More in a minute. All right, we're back with another event. This is the Deutsche Pathfinder von Südwest Afrika. Sorry, I know I'm butchering it, but um, the German um, Scouts of Southwest Africa event. Um, the the magazine that you're seeing the cover of there um, is from right about this date. I have to check, but I think. Um, you have 37 is why the event happens. Um, this is part of the photo essay inside the magazine you see here. Um, this is a um, Hitler Youth type movement in Southwest Africa um, of German, um, maybe not German nationals, but German um, res or residents, not the Afrikaners of South Africa, but the area where the most um, Germans remained after World War I in their former colonies was Southwest Africa. So we have a chance to support them or not. Um, this is not critical to getting currently, I should say, further um, events in the mod you can it will help a little bit but not much um, mainly because I have yet to expand upon um, really um, much of the Southwest Africa um, involvement so far in Tanganyika give me time now of course this, the earlier version of the mod has been out more than two years so I'm not saying anytime soon but it will um, eventually cover more areas than just Tanganyika so we can decide to support them or not. This is a little bit more political power. Um, the reason um, the, the earlier event for the D, um, KKB was less political um, power is because Germany sort of already was supporting them so you're just increasing it. Here Germany really didn't support too much, at least the evidence that I found. Um, operations in, in Southwest Africa. Did a little bit, I, I do believe, from some of the evidence, um, but not too heavily. So we're going to choose to support them here. Um, so that will conclude this um, look at Tanganyika. It, through events, explores Germany's relationship with Africa based very much on um, historical groups and historical personalities. There are 
shall we say, two what ifs, and we have yet to get to it. Um, and um, I'll just talk about it. The next major what if, or ma major event that you, sh if you want to really support um, Tanganyika and move south into uh, Africa later for Germany, is supporting the Ascari pensions. Well, give you a quick story on the Ascari pensions. Uh, of course, at the end of World War One, um, Germany basically collapsed. Um, it was brought back to life a few times and collapsed again. This economy is what I'm talking about. So they didn't have much money to pay, or I don't know if they had nationally, if they had inclinations to, to pay the Ascari pensions. The German Ascari, would, if you don't know what the Ascari were, the Ascari were basically colonial troops, African colonial troops. Most of the major powers had them that had African um, colonies. Uh, German Ascaris were paid probably double or more than anybody else's. They were paid very well. They were very loyal. Um, they were treated within the context of the 19th century racism. I'm not talking Nazi racism as in hate, but just as white people are better than black people kind of racism that was common then. Um, th within that um, context, they were treated rather well. So that's why they fought on loyally for the Germans. Well, most of the Ascari after the war, of course, signed up for the, the, the British um, occupation forces. So they continued there with a pay cut, obviously. Well, like I was saying, um, their, none of their pensions were paid or any other remunerations after the war. Well, fast forward to sometime post um, World War II, I don't know the dates, maybe early 50s or late 40s, um, the German government decided rightfully that they should pay all the surviving um, Ascaris, now this is after, well after World War II, um, all the surviving Ascaris um, a lump sum pension uh, for their services in World War I. This is where I got the idea for the series of events. So they sent down a, um, a commission down to, at that time, um, uh, still a British colony of um, Tanzania. Uh, Tanganyika, the modern Tanzania name comes from Tanganyika and Zanzibar, the island out here, put together, the names put together, because that um, island was always a, released in this time period. World War I, you know, 19, or 20th century until the end, was always a British colony. So they came down with their pension and or their money to, to give them out, some you know West German officials. And so they were very quickly, once they got down there, well, how do we know who to pay? Because the Germans didn't have accurate records on it, on who was a um, veteran or not. Most of the um, Ascaris probably still didn't have paperwork. A few did show up with paperwork and remnants of uniforms and other things to sort of prove that they were Ascari. But one of the um, diplomats that came down there had this really bright idea. What they did is they got quickly collected a bunch of brooms. And I don't know whether they did it in mass or whether they did it in individually in a room or not, but they quickly had them go through the order of arms, you know, right shoulder arms, left shoulder arms, about face and all that kind of stuff in German. And most every one of them, I, I, I don't know if there was anyone that couldn't, but all of the ones, because the language of command, you know, doing those types of things, they all knew it in German. So the later Ascaris that joined up to serve the British and such, um, you know, anytime post German occupation, wouldn't know it and couldn't do it. So these guys were all, you know, old guys, but this time, but we're all, you know, coming to attention and quickly doing the order manual of arms, as it's called, um, in German. And so that was how they determined who they should give the lump sum payment to and who they shouldn't. So that got me thinking, what if you supported the DKK and the DKK, um, and there's a fair amount of evidence of this, as an organization um, supported the, uh, the Ascaris and um, that whole relationship. So if, if you have a larger support for the DKK, you might have a um, real support for the Ascaris once Germany in 1936 or 7 is actually is when we first have the chance to um, start paying the pensions of the the Ascaris. That's the one what if thing that 
they didn't do until after World War II. So I think it's reasonable if you're putting big support behind the D, um, KKB that you could have this happen. Now, if you're not going down that road as, an, as National Socialist or Nazi Germany, it, you know, um, might not happen. But if they're enough of a group that you want to um, get support from, I could see that happening. The other, of course, the other big what if in um, Tanganyika is what if Germany made it down here? You have to achieve for the real ultimate benefits, um, like to get the extra resources and some other benefits. Um, you'll, you'll eventually, um, if you conquer here and you've done some of the support elements before, you'll gain cores in um, Tang Tanganyika. So you won't be so much occupying enemy territory. And if you take, you know, defeat Britain up here, you can, you know, get it in as your your national territory instead of occupied territory, and that type of thing. So that's the the other big what if. Obviously, if they um, did that, so everything else is now your level of support. Do you, you know, or do you pay the pensions or whatever? Maybe a bit more or less than was historically. Um, happened but everything else all the rallies all the personalities shown in it are all real people uh, real organizations real events of the National Socialist era so this isn't a fantasy mod in a sense that we're going way off historical script we're just going what if you supported the, the veterans both German and African more than what if you made it that far south those are the only real significant what ifs in Tanganyika. Otherwise, it is a very solid, very historical mod, and as a, I think, a very good preview for what you'll be seeing in the upcoming Third Reich events once it's released. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for liking the videos, both um, on YouTube and on the Steam page. And of course, um, if you decide to subscribe to this um, mod, you can rate it up. That's always good like that support post comments either on the steam page or on the paradox form either way see you later for more hearts of iron